Hey everybody, it's Lance Johnson with another edition of Amplify Your Business. And today we're down at Fitset Ninja. So normally we're doing these through Zoom calls because of social distancing, but uh, today we're trying out a 360 GoPro Max, which allows us to walk and talk and get a tour. And I got my good friend, Tim here, who's gonna give us a walkthrough of this gym. Tim, tell us a little bit about Fitset and your, I guess, journey to this point of having this gym here in the city of Edmonton. Awesome, sure. Thanks for having me on the show, Lance. My name's Tim Gourlay and I'm the founder here at Fitset Ninja, former professional athlete. I'll say I would have never thought in a million years I'd be running a Ninja Warrior gym, but um, the entrepreneurial journey runs in uh, in crazy ways and I wouldn't be, I couldn't be happier than uh, where I'm at right now. So yeah, really excited to show you the gym and, and share my story. Awesome. Well, so why don't we do that right now? Why don't we walk through uh, or into the gym anyway, as you give us a little bit of a background. Uh, so right now we're standing at the entrance and um, so when people come in, they're getting their temperature checked over here and there's some social distancing guidelines that are going on because we're still in COVID. So this is being filmed at the uh, end of September 2020. And, uh, and so then they check in, I presume, make sure that they're all healthy before they do so, go through the checklist and then into the gym we go, right? Exactly, exactly. And if people forget, it's really easy. Step in, wash your hands, sign in, we'll take your temperature. Once you're done that, the only thing left you have to do is ninja. Awesome. Step three, ninja. That's the best part. Yes. Okay, so we are walking into the main part of the gym. Now, uh, when we first uh, visited the gym, so just a, a little disclaimer here, my son and I, we are gym members here at Fitset Ninja. And so when we started ninja in uh, back in September of 2019, it was just this space here uh, which looked very different than what it is right now. And then there's more space over on that side. And uh, there's actually another space, another bay that you've expanded into as well. So why don't you just give us a little breakdown as to maybe how you got to the place of opening the first segment of this uh, gym here uh, in downtown Edmonton. Sure, well, like I said before, I would have never imagined in a million years that I'd be running a Ninja Warrior gym. Um, business was never my original intent. Uh, my goal for many years was to be a prof professional athlete. Uh, volleyball was my sport and I had high hopes to go to the Olympics and pursue a professional athletic career. But um, I saw the writing on my wall after a few, uh, a few years playing pro, um, came back to Canada, started working in sales and really started feeling that I had an entrepreneurial spirit and really wanted to get into business for myself. So. Um, about five years ago, I started my first business called Fitset, which was uh, Edmonton's multi-studio fitness pass. So for, for five years, we built a, a, a mobile app platform where on one side we would partner with boutique fitness studios, and on the other side we'd sell monthly subscriptions to our app where our members could book classes in all these different boutique fitness studios. And it was actually the process of building Fitset where this whole ninja concept originally happened. Okay, um, so so you're selling the passes, mm -hmm. but that's very different than opening your own gym, especially a ninja gym, which is extremely unique. At the time, probably the only one in the city, I presume? Yeah, there was another, there's another gym called um, City Fit Shop where they do some ninja, some obstacle course racing. So not, okay. not the first, but okay. um, we, we originally wanted to um, make ourselves, uh, make people aware of Fitset Pass and especially the people that were doing obstacle course races, Tough Mudders, those kind of OCR athletes. So we thought, what a great way to build awareness for our Fitset Pass product. Let's, let's set up an obstacle course indoors during the winter. And we were able to, to secure a temporary lease at Kingsway Mall, two months. We thought we'd set it up, build a whole bunch of awareness for this Fitset Pass product and get a whole bunch of new members. But in those two months, the Ninja thing just uh, took off way more than we would have ever imagined. And we were having a lot more fun yeah. where our team came together and we said, let's go all in on, on this. Okay, so, so it started out as a means to sell more passes for the original business, 
and then it just grew into its own entity then after that. Exactly. Well, that's really cool. Exactly. And that's, I, I think that's a, a commonality, I think, when it comes to entrepreneurs and, and business people is you start out thinking you're going to do one thing and then opportunity presents itself. And it's just a matter of do you pivot and do you uh, basically seize that opportunity or chase after that? Um, or do you stay in the lane that you were in already? And so it sounds like you chose, obviously, to go down the road of the uh, Ninja Gym instead. Now, why did you choose to do that versus uh, staying with just the past business? Because uh, since then you've sold that business off. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so now you're dedicated full time then to the Ninja Gym. So, so what was it about the Ninja Gym that was more appealing than the other business that you had selling the passes? Well, I would say the most important thing was just the sustainability of the ninja business. Okay. Um, the Fitset Pass business, it took me four and a half years of grinding away to build our revenues, but financially I wasn't making any money. It was a really low margin business and for me, the founder to make money and for the, the rest of my team to make money, we really had to, to build that to scale. Yeah. Where being my first business, not really knowing the ins and outs of software development and scaling a business, um, I just didn't didn't have the product market fit. That business, I realized, just wasn't the one that was going to grow and be the, the end all. Yeah. And um, it was really like night and day with the Ninja, just in terms of market demand, market acceptance, um, with Fitset Pass it was always such a challenge and uphill battle to get new customers to figure out how the marketing's working, where with Ninja, um, everything we put out seems to get a really great response and it's, yeah, it's just like night and day. Yeah, well, the one advantage you guys have in the Ninja Gym is that you have a TV show that is basically promoting the Ninja obstacle course lifestyle or, or challenges, right? That is so widely popular across North America, all the world probably now. And so that is just a, an ongoing promotion of the, the sport, of the gym, right? So yeah, that's a huge advantage, I think. Um, so for those people who don't know uh, the Ample Media backstory or my backstory is the, I had a business prior to Ample Media. Uh, it was a strategic consultancy and it was the exact same thing. And so um, the opportunity kind of knocked in terms of Ample Media. Um, there was some market demand and need there that kind of sprung out of something that I was doing for a client and uh, on the consulting side. And it seemed like it was much more scalable and much easier in order to basically grow that business than what the uh, consulting was. And so because of the scalability of it, I chose to go the Ample Media route and kind of left that business uh, behind. And so very similar backstory. So it's interesting. I think there's a lot of business owners that have had a similar story. So that's pivot number one. Um, so we'll get into pivot number two here in a bit, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about the growth then, because you guys went from Kingsway Mall to then signing a lease on this space and bringing in some equipment, uh, getting things set up. And so uh, where we're standing right now was the, the, the entirety of the gym and you grew and you grew re relatively quickly in that first year. So why don't we talk about the, the growth while we maybe just walk over to the other side sure. of the gym here. Sure, yeah, well, it, was, it didn't take long to realize that we needed more space. As soon as we started building out our competitive team and more and people, more and more people were signing up, we realized that, wow, it's getting pretty tight in here and we still have a lot of people that want to do Ninja. So it was actually um, just at the end of 2019 that we started talking to the landlord about the space next door. The tenant next door had just moved out. Okay. So we knew there was a vacant bay. And so we negotiated taking a third of that space, which is 10,000 square feet. So this space we had is 10,000 square feet. That other bay is 10,000 square feet. We said, okay, we'll take a third. So just over 3,000 square feet. Okay. And kind of secured the, the space. Uh, our landlord has been really helpful just in terms of helping us get up and running with some good lease terms, at least to kind of get up and going. Excellent. And um, we had all this planned before COVID hit. So when COVID hit and we shut down, that really gave us an opportunity to just hit the 
hit the floor running and get that space fit, get that space up, get our obstacles in there. Yeah. Um, and it was also a blessing because with COVID and just the, the protocols that are in place and, and regulations, we, we really needed it. Yeah. So, so interesting, right? So a lot of businesses, COVID hits, the regulations for your business was such that you needed to shut down uh, completely. Like the lights were off basically, right? Nobody yeah. was allowed in the gym for how long was it? For three months. Three months. Okay. So three months, no revenue coming in. Um, and you've just taken on some more space. So a lot of people would have been in complete panic mode and be going, holy crap, what am I doing? How do I get myself into this? Um, but you had some decent terms then from the landlord, it sounded like. Uh, so that helped out. Probably some of the programs from the government helped out as well. And so that gave you guys some buffer, I presume, then from a cash flow standpoint where you could keep the staff go in um, and start working on the development of the new space. Is that, am I mm, gathering that The right? government support was really helpful, but we weren't able to keep our staff. Okay. Um, right away, we, we did have to lay off our entire staff. They were able to transition to CERB, okay. um, which was a really tough situation, but we did still like, have expenses, our insurance. It's not like we had a ton of cash to just like keep payroll going when, yeah. when our, our revenues went to zero. So um as we kind of got our bearing and started thinking okay what's this going to look like we were able to start bringing some people back yeah. kind of temporarily yeah um we started doing a whole bunch of things just trying to make money yeah so we uh, we tried to switch our our training online so we did uh, live zoom training sessions um, realized that it was hard to do that without ninja equipment and yeah. so we ended up starting to build at home ninja kits so we're taking two by fours building little balance beams i don't know if there's some of them around here but different holds yeah. that we would incorporate into our training and um, it was a ton of work it was really hard we were generating some revenues but it just didn't seem like for the amount of work we were doing um, it, it wasn't even going to get close to the revenues that we needed to keep the business viable. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, so unlike a lot of other gyms, because of the uniqueness of Ninja needing the obstacles, it, yeah, it's really difficult for you guys to pivot into that online learning from home environment. Yeah. So, and, and if the market wasn't there for those the obstacles to purchase them, and you guys didn't have those products ready even at the beginning, that would have been really difficult. So, so you've, you're working then on uh, getting the expansion done. You're also at the same time, um, you know, playing around with these different delivery models, um, not really hitting any successes on those. So, so what happens then? What's, uh, how do you keep, keep things going? Yeah. Um, well, funny thing, what, uh, what happened, I don't know if you can see that green turf underneath the, the rig there, Yeah. but there used to be a lot more of that stuff around the gym. And as we were closed down for COVID, getting that space and up, up and running, we wanted to paint all the floors. And so we ripped up some of that turf the guys were going to throw it in the dumpster and we thought, okay, you know what? I'll just take a photo of it. Let's throw it up on Facebook marketplace. And in an hour, there was 40 responses, people wanting to buy this old turf. And we sold about a thousand square feet of it for 1500 bucks yeah. in about an hour and thought, wow, that was the most money we've made in the last three weeks being <laughs> sh completely shut down. And wouldn't it be nice to have some more turf? And luckily enough, about a week later, I was browsing the internet. Um, there was an online auction where the city of Leduc was auctioning off a whole soccer field of that exact same stuff. I was the only bidder, um, five grand. We got 14,000 square feet of turf. That's what we sold for the next month to, uh, yeah, really get some cash flow back into the business. And after that was gone, we thought it would be nice to have some more turf. So since we've actually imported a whole sea container from overseas and have been selling turf to just kind of supplement the business during this time where we, yeah, with the restrictions, we just can't get the same throughput as we, as we need to. Okay. So, okay. So you start with the passes, you pivot because you see an opportunity into uh, a scale, more scalable business in the gym, the, then COVID hits, you guys are scrambling for cash flow, and now you're selling turf. 
So this is completely outside of the business plan, right? Completely outside of the strategy. It's not even related to the industry. And now you're in the turf business. So uh, like there's a lot of business people out there that would really struggle with that because they would be like, well, that's not the business that we're in, right? So we're, we wouldn't do that. We're not gonna focus on that. And a lot of the strategists, the business strategists will say, no, you have to stick in your in your swim lane. You have to do what you're best at, where your competitive advantage is and so on. But when something like COVID hits, it's my philosophy, obviously it's yours as well, where you do whatever you possibly can to pay the bills. And so if that means selling turf, if that means doing something else, you do it, right? Because it's the life of the business that takes on so much meaning as opposed to necessarily just doing, you know, staying in that lane of ninja fitness because if you don't keep the lights on, if you don't keep the basics going through that downturn, there is no ninja after that, right? Yeah, so so that's that's good on you for, for pivoting like that. And it's interesting that you're still doing it, right? So you're still finding that opportunity, you have the space to do it. So uh, that's pivot number two, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. why don't we uh, walk a little bit more sure. here and just, uh, take a look at the, the gym. So one of the things that I had mentioned that there's a lot of change here at the gym compared to what it was in September, 2019, and that's all these murals. So tell me a little bit about the murals that uh, you've got on the walls here throughout. Yeah, well, there's a, there's quite a backstory to the murals. The, the connection with the murals actually originated when we first started up at Kingsway Mall. So right when it was still a temporary pop-up, we, uh, we were in a former Sears space and so I had hired some painters to paint the columns in the sear space, just to make it not look like a sear space as much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And these painters, they, they asked me, they said, hey, we're actually uh, graffiti artists. And I noticed all these big walls around here. We're looking for a place to paint in the summer. Do you mind if we paint in here? Yeah. And I said, sure. And so over the whole time we were there, they were there in the evenings with their buddies painting these massive epic murals all around this 80,000 square foot seer space. And so that was really the start of our relationship um, with huh. these really talented graffiti artists. They're, uh, they, they formed the Rust Magic Mural Festival, so they're kind of behind all of the big murals around the city. Yeah. So when we moved over here, they painted the front of the building, the purple, that type of stuff. Um, but when we shut down for COVID and we were renovating this space, I wanted to do something for our coaches. Yeah. Um, it was one of the muralists that actually brought the idea to me for these uh, portraits. I don't know if you can see them at the very back. So I commissioned a guy named AJ Loudon um, to do those, um, those portraits. And at the same time, we just put up this massive wall and it was just getting uh, finished getting taped. And he said, hey, like, do you mind if I throw something on these walls? And I said, sure. And he put up a mural, he started bringing some friends and he just kept going and going and going and really turned this space into what he called his mural lab. Yeah. Which was a place where he was able to try out new types of styles of his, his art, new things that um, he isn't able to do for normal clients. And so he had full uh, reign on all of the stuff in here and. He just went to town and killed it. It's totally magical, right? Like it just really makes the space. It's so, so unique and uh, just brings so much life and vibrancy to the gym. I, I think it's just absolutely phenomenal. And this is the other thing that uh, I think we always want to uh, remind ourselves of as local small business people as well, is that there's a community here, a community of other entrepreneurs. And when you're out there doing good things with good people, you have these things that just kind of naturally come about and come to you. And so this is uh, an example of that, right? Where you are putting out great energy, you're working, you're collaborating with people, and then all of a sudden you've got one of the most unique uh, warehouse kind of spaces, gyms in the whole city. Uh, this, is, this is pretty special. Pretty yeah, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so on the other side of this uh, wall, what do we got over there? On the other side of this wall is the remaining 70% of this 10,000 square foot chunk. So it didn't take us long to get back in conversation with the landlord about this space because once we reopened in the summer and started looking at the numbers and the wage subsidy and these government supports 
phasing down, we realized that we needed to expand our business in another way to make ends meet. To make ends meet. Okay, um, so it looks like a classroom in here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so now you're a school. Um, we're we're not a school, but we're uh, we're a learning environment for kids who aren't able to go back to school or for families who aren't comfortable to send their kids back to school to do their e-learning here at our facility. So we've okay. hired a teacher, we've hired a, a TA that are helping these kids um, do their e-learning that's still done through their specific school, um, but just done in our facility where they have you know, a ton of space. There's only 15 kids in here. Um, they're able to just do it in a much kind of safer environment than, than the schools right now. Yeah, tons of spacing uh, here for the kids. And I know that there you have a few more spots available yet that you can fill. And so it'll get a little little busier in here, but not uh, nearly to the degree of what any classroom is going to be. Now, the one thing that I love about this concept is there's so many uh, kids out there that are, you know, really struggled with the at-home learning that they were having to do as soon as uh, COVID hit in the spring. In those last couple of months, it was extremely difficult for them to stay focused as well as extremely difficult on the parents to keep their kids focused, right? So I know there was a lot of parents fighting with a lot of kids. And so uh, this is really interesting. So it's they're still in the learning from home kind of program mm -hmm. that uh, the school board has available, but they're supported by an actual teacher and a TA. And on top of that, you get to they get to have a ton of physical activity, I imagine. So tell me a little bit about that. How does that fit into into their day. Exactly, that's that's a big part of the program where um, we're getting the kids out on the course multiple times a day. There's two big blocks where they can go out for open gym, they run, they play, they're just yeah. unstructured, able to go out and just let out their energy. And we also have a daily class each day where our instructors are able to teach them a little bit more about the sport of ninja, the technique behind a lot of these obstacles and drills, things like that. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of physical activity, but also a good opportunity for socialization. Yeah. Like these kids that are doing the e-learning at home are really craving that. And so it's really nice to see everybody here, all these kids having fun, doing their schoolwork and just really enjoying themselves. Yeah, it just sounds like such a gift to those parents who have really rambunctious kids or high energy kids who have that challenge in basically learning from home and staying focused on the task at hand, be able to burn off all that energy and still have the support of actual teachers. Like it just seems like a win, win, win. So when it comes to the age range or the grade range, what are we talking about here? Yeah, we're, we're grades one to nine. Okay. Um, primarily, most of the kids here are, are elementary age. We do have yeah. a few uh, junior high school kids, but um, yeah, grades one to nine. Oh, huh, really cool. Yeah, this, so this is pivot number three then. So yeah, so, yeah this is, uh, again, a lesson of pivoting or in pivoting everybody, because when it comes to entrepreneurship, this is the one thing that we always have to do is we never know what's gonna come. And the successful businesses are not the businesses that have the best business plan. They're, or the ones necessarily who are executing the best on a business plan. It's those who make up the business plan as they're going along sometimes. And so I think this is one of the things that a lot of people uh, who are thinking about jumping into entrepreneurship are very fearful of because they look at businesses like Fits at Ninja from the outside and they're thinking, geez, Tim, he's got it all figured out. He's probably, you know, spent uh, years in business school and and probably worked within the gym industry for years and years. And and he's got this uh, well-oiled, uh, you know, business plan that's been crafted through all the experiences that he's had. The reality of it is, is you're kind of making it up as you're going along to a certain degree, right? Totally. Yeah. You, you have the plan, you have the financial model, all that type of stuff, mm -hmm. but, um, you sometimes just have to go off plan and react to the environment that presents itself. And who, who would have, who would have expected what we have now, a global pandemic, like nobody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You went from, from, uh, the, uh, fitness business into now the education business like it's just it's so unique right that that has been the journey thus far and i'm really excited to to see where this goes as well i mean i'm sure there's going to be potentially more pivots down the down the road uh is there anything that you're thinking of right now that you care to share or is this you kind of got your hands full at this point 
Well, we're, um, we've got all these new lines up, so we're really trying to just make sure that we are delivering now on our promise. A lot of new product lines, we're doing a lot of things, so just making sure we can get all of our operations to, to par. And, um, that's a lot of work, but yep. still just keeping an open mind, especially with the turf, there seems to be a demand for it. And we've really had some success just satisfying the demand on the short term. So potentially there's an opportunity there. Um, really just trying to keep an open mind to the opportunities that present themselves. Yeah. Yeah. See what happens. You never know, right? Uh, what, where that, uh, that next venture or that next adventure is going to lead you. So um, now I guess just a quick summary. I know that you guys uh, do birthday parties or you did. Is that still a thing that can happen through COVID here? Yeah, we're still doing birthday parties. It is, uh, there's less time slots available and it is just like less size of groups in here. Yeah. But yeah, we're still doing birthday parties. Um, we're still doing our competitive, our team training. Yeah. You know, evenings that you're part of yeah yeah Lance is part of he said he's a, a member here but he's actually a competitive team athlete here um, so that's still going on we're running weekend camps we're running a homeschool gym class so for a lot of the families that are homeschooling their kids um, okay. we have a class that just runs during the day so okay and then uh so you have the competitive team the birthday parties you got some camps that are happening you've got the class room now uh, for those who are, are stay at home or uh, learning uh, online, I guess would be the better term. And then uh, the next camps that you'll be doing for all the rest of the folks too would be probably Christmas break, or is there? Yeah, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna yeah. do a camp during Christmas break. Definitely. Okay. And then spring break is obviously another time in which there's lots of needs for camp and then back to summer again, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then who knows what's going to happen. You guys might have the whole building. Yeah. Uh, who knows? Or we might be out of COVID or we might be in COVID. I know in the summer too, too you guys were also set up outside a little bit too, which is, uh, again, opens up that uh, social distancing that was required at that particular point in time. So you guys could open up sooner. Um, logistically, probably a little bit more challenging. So with all this added space, you probably don't need to do that again, but it might be an option if need be in the, sp in the spring or summer again, eh? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we often have requests for events and things like that. So yeah. with this whole new, environment we, we most likely will be look, still looking at additional ways to bring in revenue and the mobile yeah. unit might be a, a good way to help people that are really you know, still worried about COVID and they should they should be yeah uh, but to do it outside and have more distance so yeah we're, we're definitely open to those types of things okay so if somebody wants to check out more or learn a little bit more about Fitset Ninja where do they go um, our website fitsetninja.com we're also on Facebook and Instagram so lots of cool ninja videos yeah. and things like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, all online. Yeah, and I gotta say, if you guys aren't checking out the uh, social channels, definitely do so because some of the uh, coaches that are, are coaching the competitive team are unbelievable. I mean, these are world-class athletes who are giving the instructions to guys like me. And so these guys are doing some incredible things in the gym. And so Cody, who's the head coach, he had uh, strapped in a GoPro into his mouth and he did the full obstacle course uh, from his point of view, which was just insane because this guy is a beast when it comes to obstacles. And so really exciting stuff to see. So I encourage you guys to check it out. So any last words at all? Um, I guess advice to uh, any entrepreneurs or, or aspiring entrepreneurs that get want, want to get into business. Yeah. Um, sometimes you just have to take the dive and see where it takes you. Um, you can put all the plans together that you want and it's important that you do, but just being open to a go off plan to do what needs to be done to keep running the business. Thanks again, Tim. Really appreciate the time that you took. Uh, today to give us a tour of the gym. Uh, it's really exciting what you have going on here. I know you're going to be wildly successful because you have that determination that every entrepreneur needs to have. So when you, 
you know, something goes sideways when you, when you get knocked to the mat, you get back up. And so that's probably comes from all your uh, pro athletic career, uh, all the years of that, just really bouncing back. And you're definitely proving to do that. So I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. It's definitely different than the type of episodes we've been doing in the past, a little more storytelling and in person here, uh, socially distanced, of course. But um, if you are interested in seeing more of this style, definitely reach out, let me know, and we'll line up some more of this style, okay? Take care, everybody. Thanks again, Tim. Thanks, Lance.